Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Saturday Night Church Live. I'm Pastor Ryan, and I am super glad that you're joining us tonight. And if you're tuning in for the very first time, special welcome to you. I want to encourage you to um, go to our website, newlifecommunity.us, click connect, and uh, there you will be able to fill out a connect card, connect with us, um, send us prayer requests. All of you can do that. Um, but if you're new with us tonight and it's the first time you fill out a Connect card, you'll be able to select one of our uh, resident partners, New Life. We have a number of groups that are in our building, uh, Young Life and Big Brothers, Big Sisters, In Him Christian Wellness. And for filling out a Connect card, we're going to make a $5 donation to one of our partners on your behalf and uh, you won't be doing it. We're going to be doing it for you under uh, just as a thank you um, to you for connecting. But it gives us an awesome opportunity to just bless um, our community partners that we love so much. So take some time if you're brand new tonight just to do that connect card. Everyone else, I encourage you to, to submit one too with your prayer request. And, um, and there's also, you know, our online giving. You can give to New Life. Uh, there's the give button there and um, all the other information you need to know about new life, what's coming up, all the events right there on the website. Got a few birthdays this week to celebrate. Uh, Jane Mylan, uh, her birthday is this week. Jake Neal, uh, one of our uh, good friends, moved to North Carolina but connects every week uh, in one of our uh, connect groups. And so Jake, happy birthday. And then Brittany Nisley, who is also a good friend of A New Life and been involved in a number of different ways, uh, works at Life Guide Financial. Uh, again, one of our, our good partners. So uh, happy birthday to all of you. Let's pray uh, before we jump in uh, to our message tonight. Father God, thank you for the, the beauty uh, of who you are. Thank you, God, for your character. Um, God, you, you are um, love, you are peace, you are patience, you are goodness, you are, you are kind and compassionate. Um, God, thank you for your incredible love for us, your desire to restore and redeem and remake us. Thank you, uh, God, for your word. Um, thank you for the, the power of your word and how when we apply what you say, uh, we really do start living a new transformed life. And um, that's only possible through you, Jesus. And so thank you uh, for dying on the cross for us. Thank you. Um, you know, your power was demonstrated in your resurrection and uh, you have overcome um, death. You've overcome sin. You've overcome the world. And, uh, and you want to raise us up as overcomers too. And so we uh, continue to want to walk with you and and um, as we're in this series uh, continue to help us uh, be real and so with that thank you in Jesus name amen so we're in a series right now called let's get real and uh, getting real is all about wanting to look like Jesus live like Jesus and lead like Jesus in a world that is very far from Jesus and uh, I don't know about you, but one of the quickest places, one of the quickest um, instruments, uh, whatever word you want to use, for it to get really, not real, but really bad uh, for me um, is through my tongue. And uh, the way I look, the way I live, the way I lead can quickly move away from Jesus um, with just the opening of my mouth. And, uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, taming the tongue. And we've been in this series in the book of James. And uh, tonight I want you to turn, if you've got your Bible, um, you know, maybe you're on your computer, so you can open your, your Bible app on your phone. Um, but I want you to go to James chapter 3. And we're specifically talking about the passage, James 3, uh, verses 1 uh, through verse 12. And uh, that's kind of where we're landing tonight. A good thing is, you know, over the next week, read this passage over and over again. You know, go back to it and allow God to speak, lead, guide, and direct you uh, through this passage. But it's, 
It's called, um, entitled, you know, this section, uh, Taming the Tongue. And so I'm going to read it, and, uh, and then we're going to dig into it. And so James starts out, and he says, Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers and sisters, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, uh, he is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest uh, is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his or her life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. Shows the enemy has a real place in this. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man. But no man, no woman can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. Ah, my brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Whew, you know, again, verse one, James, um, you know, he's like, Okay, let me reposition you here, folks. Not many of you should presume to be teachers. Why? Why is he saying this? Like, again, he's just like, you know, not pulling out any punches, right? Uh, he's like, let me reposition you. Not many of you should presume to be teachers because following Jesus, leading, growing, teaching, it leads to being seen. It leads to being judged. James is in no way saying, don't go after. Don't go after Jesus. Don't go after teaching. Don't go after leading. Don't go after, you know, becoming more and more like Jesus at all. But he's like, don't let it go to your head. Don't, don't let it, you know, become what you're, what you're all about. Don't lord it over people thinking that you're better than anyone else. Why? In verse two, he says, we all stumble <laughs> because we all stumble. And in many different ways, he says, verse two, we all stumble in many different ways. If anyone is never at fault in what they say, they are a perfect person, able to keep their whole body in check. You can, again, hear kind of the sarcasm here, the like, you know, he's making light of it, making a point here that we're all, we all fall short um, of God's glory. We all, we all struggle in, in many different ways. And, um, and, and James gives us, you know, kind of, the, he's painting this picture, right? And, and he's like, and the tongue the tongue is one of those things that is the most the most dangerous pieces of where our stumbling, our sinfulness, our brokenness comes out. And that's what we're talking about tonight. And uh, James gives us some really core truths about the tongue in in chapter 3 verses, you know, 1 through 12. You know the first First bit is, and you can go back and, and look at some of these, but he says it's a small part with lots of power. You know, and he, and he kind of compares it to a bit in a horse's mouth, which, you know, again, it's this little piece of metal that just 
goes into the horse's mouth and just tiny bits of pressure on that bit with the reins turns that, you know, two, 3,000 pound animal, um, whichever direction we want it to go. And, you know, the rudder too on a ship, this, you know, compared to the massive, you know, expanse of the ship, the rudder is just this little tiny piece, but it again, you know, sets the direction for this huge, you know, heavy um, piece of machinery that's, that's traveling through the water. And, and so the tongue is like that, he's saying. It's a small part, but it has a lot of power. He also says that pride and boasting tend to flow from it. You know, and, and unfortunately, and I share this around New Life a lot, you know, what's the middle letter of the word sin? I. And unfortunately, you know, I take first place in my mind and in my world a lot of the time. And that's what the Holy Spirit, you know, who lives in a believer is trying to work out that, that it's no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. And, um... One of the key things that tends to come out of the tongue is pride and boasting, um, you know, trying to put ourselves above others. You know, what's, what's the point of gossip? You know, it's to, a lot of times to make, bring somebody down, to raise ourselves up, uh, you know, our competition. And I'm not going to go any further in it, but pride and boasting, James says, flows out of the tongue. That's where you hear and see pride the most. He also says, as a third thing, that it, it can set the direction of our whole life. You know, and he, and he, he kind of uses the illustration of a fire and how a spark can start an entire forest on fire. And what we do with our tongue, what comes out of our mouths, can, can do so much uh, in setting the course, good and bad, <laughs> the setting the direction of our life. You know, James says, and again, it's kind of like right at the very end of verse six, he says, um, it sets the whole course of his life on fire. And then he says, and is itself set on fire by hell. And, um, it's full of deadly poison, he says um, in verse 8. Um, he says, no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. And, and you know, that's this, we have a sinful nature. And so that sinful nature within us, it's just like wanting to come out. And one of the most prevalent ways that it comes out of us is through our tongue. And we can say a lot of hurtful things. We can say a lot of things that don't sound like Jesus, don't make us look like Jesus, and certainly don't bring the life of Jesus uh, to people around us. And so James is like, hey, this thing, it's full of deadly poison. Be aware of it. And, and then a fifth thing that, you know, I think he kind of brings out in this, um, in this passage, specifically down in verse, verses 9, uh, 9, 10, 11, is that it's masked by our outward appearance. Um, you know, out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. And so we can, we can look the part, but then we start in our words, we can start to set ourselves apart from what we look. And so there's this whole piece of, you know, two two sides of who we are and um and the, the out of the same tongue comes praises and and curses he says can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring um can a fig tree bear olives and olive tree bear f f figs a grapevine bear frigs figs uh, neither can salt spring produce fresh water Let's get real. You know, that's what this series is. Let's get real. And what's on the inside, if we're going to be real with ourselves, what's on the inside is going to come out. And it's going to come out through the tongue. And the tongue, what James is getting at, and what I think we all know, right? I'm not, I'm not saying anything that we probably all don't know anyway. 
but but the truth is we need to hear it and we need we need to go oh yeah it's true is that the tongue is a dangerous little exit it's a dangerous little exit and so tonight as we're you know the rest of our time here i want to talk about how can we tame the tongue what are some practical things that we can do to get real about taming this little exit? Um, and I want to read, Jesus actually speaks some things that I think are really critical when we're talking about uh, how we tame the tongue. And, and let me give you this. The first way, I think, uh, the first way to tame your tongue is to focus on your heart. You know, it's not even to focus on what you say and don't say. Because we could constantly be thinking about what am I saying, what am I not saying, what, should I say that, should I not say that, and that has a part. But even before we go there, I think it's really important that we need to focus on our heart. And Jesus gets right to the, right to the heart of this, haha, no pun intended. In, in uh, Matthew chapter 15, verses 16 through 20, Matthew chapter 15, 16 through 20, Jesus says this, are you still so dull? So Jesus is getting real with us too, right? Jesus asked them, don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes in the stomach and then out the body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart and these defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what defile a person, but eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. You know, again, Jesus is like, you know, we sometimes we're so worried about, you know, things that we shouldn't be worried about. And he's like, whatever goes into the mouth, it goes through the stomach and out of the body. Because the religious leaders, they were all questioning him about should the disciples be eating and blah, blah, blah. It was all religious law, all about, you know, doing the right thing, but religiously. But Jesus was like, hold on a second. This is a whole lot more important than, than just like whether the food is clean or your hands are clean. Like, oh, disciples forgot to wash their hands. Now they're eating. Now they're going to defile themselves. Jesus is like, it... There is something a whole lot more important here that you guys are all missing, and that is, is what's in the heart and what comes out of the mouth. He's like, you can do all of the making sure you do all these things, but in your heart, you're, you're committing adultery in your thought life. You're, you know, you're slandering. You're, um, you know, you're thinking murderous thoughts. It's not even to commit murder, but thinking murderous thoughts. Adultery, he's talking about sexual immorality, theft, false testimony. Again, he's talking about out of the heart come all these things. And so I think, you know, the first way to tame our tongue is to really focus on our heart. You know, we need to guard our heart. Our eyes and our ears are where the stuff comes in. Not the mouth. We don't we don't take any of the things that are going to mess us up for the most part, you know, in with our mouth. It's through our eyes and our ears. And so what, what are we looking at? You know, what are we listening to? And is it, is it, is it growing a heart that's like Jesus? Let's get real. Come on. If, if we're, if we're taking in things that are are really not good, right, pure, lovely, admirable, honorable. Those, those things are going to feed our heart. And we need to be feeding our heart on the things of the kingdom. Because then if we're taking in what's not of the kingdom, guess what's going to be coming out? Things that aren't of the kingdom. And, and when they come out, it's going to, again, it, it blows our testimony. Um, you know, Mark chapter one, verse 35, um, you know, we're going to go there in a minute, but again, Jesus, um, guarded his heart. You know, he, he really did. He made sure he was feasting on God's word and God's word was in him. And so when the enemy came and tempted him, what came out? The word of God. 
um, encouragement came out, healing came out, blessing came out. And may that be so with us. But it doesn't start with just watching what we're saying. It starts with guarding our intimacy with Jesus. Intimacy with God is absolutely critical in this. The second way that um, if we're going to get real about taming this thing and about, you know, again, looking like Jesus, living like Jesus and leading like Jesus, uh, then the second way we need to tame our tongue is to spend more time in silence. It's, it's not with more talking, it's with less talking. And um, again, Jesus is, is such a good example of this. And like I said, Mark chapter one, verse 35, it says, very early in the morning, Jesus started his day. While it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place. He went off to a place of quiet. He went off to a place of silence where he prayed. It was just him and God. And, and again, you know, we've talked about the discipline of silence uh, in our series on traction. And um, silence is so incredibly important. And the discipline of silence, this is a, a really good book um, that, that I've used in Growing Leaders. So a number of people at New Life have read this book. It's by Henry Nouwen. It's called The Way of the Heart, uh, Connecting with God Through Prayer, Wisdom, and Silence. And, um, and in, in here, Henry Nouwen talks about silence. Um, there's a whole uh, section on the discipline of silence. And he says, silence is the home of the word. It, it's, silence is the place where Jesus is able to, to, to have place. Silence is the home of the word of God. And he says, silence gives strength and fruitfulness to the word. So it's in the place of silence where God's word, because we're not talking, we're just, we're being with God, we're not, we're listening, we're taking in, right? It's that feasting, it's feeding our heart the good things. And silence is the place where we're listening, where we're taking in, where we're receiving, and it gives strength and fruitfulness to the word. Um, Psalm 39, verse 1, the psalmist, again, Psalm 39, verse 1, says this, I said, I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth while in the presence of the wicked. Silence. Um, you know, it's not even so much watching what we say. It's not saying anything, right? I will watch my ways and I will keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle. It's not even a bit, right? It's a muzzle on my mouth while in the presence of the wicked. Well, we're in a culture that is not a Christian culture, not the kingdom culture. So if we're going to get real, we need to practice the discipline of silence and speak when led versus speaking to be heard. Uh, I think it's really important. Proverbs 10, verse 19, uh, in the Passion Translation, Proverbs 10, 19, says, if you keep talking, it won't be long before you're saying something really wrong. Prove your wise from the very start. Just bite your tongue and be strong. I love how this is worded. Uh, Proverbs 10, 19. If you keep talking, it won't be long before you're saying something really long, really wrong and long. Prove your wise from the very start. Just bite your tongue and be strong. Um, Henry Nouwen says this, speaking is dangerous and easily leads us away from the right path. So the discipline of silence is really important. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help us tame our tongue. And I think both of those passages are so critical. Um, again, if we want to get real about this, if we want to get real about following Jesus, then, then we've got to guard our heart because out of the heart, the mouth speaks. And we've got to take in, and silence is a key to that. Silence is also a key in just not saying things that are gonna get us in trouble. So there's both, right? There's silence to receive and, and to take in and silence to just not, not engage. Um, and, and you know, silence isn't just all the speaking, it's also the written word, you know? And so, yeah, I'm gonna hit it, you know? Like how we respond and what we put on Facebook, what we put on social media, 
those things are all, it's, it's speaking, it's, it's outward, you know, communication. And so we've got to be, uh, like Henry Nouwen says, speaking is dangerous and easily leads us away from the right path. Silence, connection with God, keeps us on the right path. The third way uh, to tame your tongue is to grow in wisdom, <clears throat> to grow in wisdom. And I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to stop because next week we're going to talk about <clears throat> growing in wisdom. That's where James goes next week. And he talks about two different kinds of wisdom. And so I'm going to quit for tonight. But let's just do a, a really quick recap is we want to tame the tongue. James really gets at us. If we want to be real, if we want to be, you know, again, um, living the life of Jesus and leading like Jesus and looking like Jesus, then, then we need, we need to, to be careful with our tongue and uh, because we all stumble. None of us are out of the woods on this one. And the way that we're going to get real about taming this thing is, first of all, by focusing on our heart, making sure what's going in is, is of Christ, is healthy and good and whole. Um, there's enough there's enough messy stuff uh, that we don't need to choose it. It's going to find its way in without us just constantly taking it in. Second way is let's let's spend some time in silence. Let's learn. Let's learn what not to say. But then let's learn to not say anything at all unless we're led by Holy Spirit. And then <clears throat> third way is to grow in wisdom. We need to be wise. <clears throat> and uh, next week we're going to talk about we're going to talk about wisdom and what that looks like. So thanks for joining us tonight. Really thankful you're here. Uh, pray that you're encouraged, and I pray that this next week, as you continue to read James chapter three verses one through twelve, uh, you're going to be encouraged. You're going to grow, and you're going to continue to become uh, a, a man, a woman, a young person. Um, who is looking like Jesus, living like Jesus, and leading like Jesus in a world that's really far from Jesus. Let's keep getting real, everyone. Take care.